Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be talking about trigonometry and specifically, we wanna answer this question here. So we have sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared is equal to what? Now, if you're taking any sort of trigonometry course or maybe like a pre-calculus course, this uh, is something that you should know. But if you are not, uh, this is not that difficult of a question. And it'd be a nice little introduction to those of you that have to take trigonometry. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then we're also uh, going to be talking about trigonometric identities because that's what this problem is about. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, uh, the topic here is trigonometric identities. This happens to be a specific identity. And if you don't even know what I'm talking about, I'm going to explain all of this. But let's go and take a look at the answer. Sine squared theta, or uh, sine theta squared. It's another way to kind of say this. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Now imagine that all this complicated stuff is just equal to a fancy 1. Well, that is the correct answer. And this is really, really one of these things that if you are going to be taking trigonometry or again, of course, like pre-calculus, this is something that you're going to know very, very well because this is a very, very common trigonometric identity. Okay, so if you got this right, let's go and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you remember your Pythagorean theorem identities. And that's what this is right here. And let's go ahead and uh, clarify this identity statement here. So first of all, I, I did mention uh, the Pythagorean identity, well, and it kind of comes from the Pythagorean theorem, which of course is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where we're talking about right triangles. And if you look here, we have uh, sine squared plus cosine squared. It kind of looks like this part of Pythagorean theorem. But the c squared, in fact, is just 1. So this is what this uh, particular um, identity is called. It's called a Pythagorean identity. But what is a trigonometric identity? Well, let's go ahead and talk about uh, uh, Pythagorean identities specifically, and then I'll go ahead and kind of explain this word right here. Okay, so an identity is nothing more than like a formula. Okay, we're basically making a statement. So let's take a look at this first identity, of course, the one in question. So we have sine uh, squared x, when, uh, x here, and theta are angles. And these angles can be in either radians or degrees. But if you took uh, a particular angle, okay, it's the same angle, and you, you took the sine of the angle, you, you squared it, plus the cosine of that angle and you square that and added all this together, you would get one. So this is a, an equivalency, an identity, a trigonometric identity is an equivalency. In other words, we're stating that the left-hand side of the equation is equal to the right-hand side of the equation. So it's just a fancy word for something being equal to something else. Now, why would we need such identities? Well, in trigonometry, uh, when you are dealing with trigonometric formulas and trigonometric equations, you need to use a lot of these identities. And one of the most favorite things that students love to do is um, trigonometric identity problems. And if you are taking a trig class or a pre-calculus class, or maybe something like a college algebra class, you'll know what I'm talking about. Effectively, what you'll have is you'll have one side of a trigonometric equation, and you have to uh, kind of prove that this side is equal to the other side. And the way you do that is by using these identities. Okay, so again, to um, solve or work with trigonometric identity problems, you need to know some fundamental identities. And some of the most fundamental identities are these Pythagorean identities, okay? Uh, so here we have sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to one. We'll talk a little bit more about this particular identity, but let's take a look at some other ones here that you need to be familiar with. Again, uh, this is stuff that you will see if you're taking any of those courses I talked about. 
So another identity would be 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to secant squared x. So if you have a statement secant squared x, you can say, oh, that's the same thing as 1 plus tangent squared x. Another identity would be 1 plus cotangent squared x is equal to cosecant squared x. And just to be very specific here, when I'm saying sine squared x, that's the same thing, the way I kind of have it written right here, this notation, as sine theta squared. In other words, this notation, because uh, the squared, the exponents right here, is the same thing as sine theta times sine theta, or of course sine theta squared. You can think of this notation as the same as this notation. And this is important, especially when you're doing these trigonometric identity problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and just talk a little bit more about uh, this specific identity. So here we have sine uh, squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. Now this 1... And when you're doing trigonometric identity problems, you can have all sorts of, of ones. You can have, let's say, tangent or, uh, over tangent, right? Like, say, tangent x over tangent x. So let's suppose you were doing some manipulation, and you had uh, this right here. Matter of fact, let me scoot this up. And you're doing some work, and you're like, okay, what is this equal to? Uh, you have to kind of look at this and say, oh, that's equal to 1. You're like, oh, yes, this is true because this is equal to 1. Now, of course, this 1 here is a tangent x over tangent x, but anything divided by itself is, in fact, 1. So just kind of a little bit of an introduction to trigonometric identities. Another thing you can do with a trigonometric identity like this one here, I'm going to scoot this up, is shift things around. So, for example, let's say you just wanted sine squared x on one side of the equation. You could just go ahead and... Uh, subtract cosine squared x on both sides, and you would get the following, for example. Okay, you can make this statement. Sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. And then you can do all sorts of different algebra on this statement as well. So a little bit of an introduction to uh, trigonometric identities. Again, this particular one, uh, is something that you want to commit to your long-term memory. There are a ton of different identities, but some of the most basic ones would be like, for example, uh, tangent x is equal to sine x over cosine x. These are like uh, the real kind of basic type of identities along with this particular identity. So again, if you're taking a trig class, a pre-calculus class, you're going to have to know your trigonometric identities. If you need help with this, by the way, I have a great pre-calculus course where I teach everything uh, about trigonometric identities and all the advanced trig that you need to know. But hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.